Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in our talks with Walt as we are calling our readings through the deathbed edition of Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass. We turn now to a poem called simply Thought, poem number 22 of the 29 of By the Roadside. Of course, we've already commented on the number of ways in which this word gets used in uh, Leaves of Grass and especially in By the Roadside. Um, for example, poem number 25, a couple of poems later, will also be the word thought, and they are companion reads that have gliding over all and, uh, and, and has never come to the an hour in, in between. So we'll be paying attention to the ways in which these two poems kind of go together. Now our assumptions are that you've been following our stuff at LearnStrong.net, down that left-hand side, Talks with Walt, and we've been messing around with uh, poems from the very beginning. Um, in our inscriptions all the way up to, I gave an introductory set of comments for intro, intro to the roadside, and, uh, and then we just finished with Visor. Now our background information from our Nortons uh, will, will tell us <clears throat> that uh, this poem, these two lines were originally the third and fourth lines of the four-line poem number four of the Thoughts section in Leaves of Grass 1860-67. In 1871 and in 72 and in 76, the poem appeared in Passage to India, and then finally in 1881, it was transferred to where it is now, uh, by the roadside. The uh, poem is going to begin with this construction with the word of. You'll remember that the previous poem thought was of obedience, faith, adhesiveness, and now it's going to be of justice, and then in poem 20, uh, uh, two, two poems later, it'll be of equality. So clearly, Whitman is now thinking about issues of politics and, of course, the idea of what does it mean when we talk about justice. Um, you'll maybe uh, remember that from the very beginning of, of Leaves of Grass, you'll remember these last lines of life immense from of, of oneself I sing, the very first poem of Leaves of Grass. Of life immense in passion, pulse, and power, cheerful for freest action formed under the laws divine, the modern man I sing. Um, and this idea then of laws being divine will play into this reading. Of justice, as if justice could be anything but the same ample law expounded by natural judges and saviors, as if it might be this thing or that thing according to decisions. Now this is a very interesting little poem and it resurrects a whole lot of, I think, some of the central themes and messages of Leaves of Grass. I think that in By the Roadside we stumble onto and into some of the, some of the more important reasons that Whitman actually published Leaves of Grass. Notice it begins with this capitalization of the word justice. By the way, remember in the poem to you that he said it this way, none has done justice to you, you have not done justice to yourself. You'll also remember that in Song of the Answer, number two, remember this, he said, the maker of poems settles justice. So I think he's coming back to this idea of justice. And then notice the dash. As if justice could be anything but the same ample law. By the way, the word same, of course, is, is going to challenge us. When we, when we talk about justice, we're talking about sameness. The same ample law, you'll remember the word ample was in the earlier poem of uh, Farm Picture, and uh, expounded by natural judges. Now remember, we were at natural in Visor, the previous poem, will be again in nature in the next poem. So clearly that's in, that's in uh, Whitman's minds. Judges and saviors. By the way, the only time the word saviors ever gets used in all of these grasses is right here. It's fascinating. As if, back to the as if construction, as if justice, it might be this thing or that thing according to decisions. Now this idea of natural law will take us back to Whitman's fascination with Jefferson and the laws of nature and nature's God um, uh, in, in the Declaration of Independence. Well, what exactly is going on here at 2A? I think that the argument that Whitman will make, and, and we'll come back to it two more poems uh, here in a little bit when he goes to equality, I think that the argument that he's making is true law is always just or natural. And if it's not, there's something wrong with it. At 2B, I would point out the use of the dash. I would also point out this of as if construction. We'll come back to it a little bit later. And at 3A, obviously, very influential for Whitman was Emerson's essay on nature and the idea of natural law. Think about Martin Luther King Jr. in his letter from a Birmingham jail and the way that he borrows, actually, from Sophocles' Antigone to talk about natural law, what is actually just law, as opposed to 
decisions, as, as, as we'll say it in this poem, decisions that are just kind of arbitrary and, dare we say it, man-made. And of course, all of these questions of justice in the Western tradition track back to Plato's Republic, especially to the question that is going to be there central, what is justice? That is to say, the Thersemican answer and, of course, the Glauconian uh, uh, paradigm. As we've talked about, we've given full lectures on this at LearnStrong.net, finally at 3B, just to own a little poem like this. Do you believe in the idea of a higher law or natural law? And do you believe then, therefore, that there are laws which can be disobeyed and should be disobeyed? We, of course, think of Thoreau's civil disobedience here, right? That should be disobeyed because they are, in fact, unjust laws. Where do you, where do you come down on this? A little, a little treasure here, poem in the middle of By the Roadside. Thank you.